welcome to the 44th lecture of this lecture series on international arbitration practice this lecture is a part of chapter 3 on responding to notice invoking arbitration and defenses in the last three lectures we discussed about how to draft the response to notice of arbitration under the unsettled arbitration rules where the notice of arbitration is invoked in an international investment treaty we had also examined the response dated 24 10 2019 in Nord Stream 2 AG versus the European Union TCA case number 2020-7. In this lecture, we provide a checklist of the most important items for such a response to enable law students and young law professionals use it in their law practice. The first item in the checklist is whether the reply to the notice of arbitration is being sent within 30 days from the notice of arbitration. Note that the unsettled arbitration rules require the reply within 30 days from receipt. But as a matter of abundant caution, the reply may be prepared ready within 30 days from the date of notice. The second item in the checklist is the name and contact details of the respondent and respondent counsels, including email addresses. Thirdly, there should be a statement that the reply has been authorized by the respondent. This is quite common in commercial arbitration, but not so common in international investment arbitration. The fourth item in the checklist is regarding whether the respondent has any objection to invocation, including including as regards local exhaustion or that the invocation was not properly undertaken, etc. The fifth item in the checklist is in addition to objection to the invocation of arbitration, where there is any. objection regarding the lack of jurisdiction to the arbitral tribunal sixthly whether the invocation is premature or whether pre arbitral steps completion of pooling of fees etc have been followed the seventh item in the checklist is whether there is any response on the claimant's identification of the arbitration agreement that is sought to be invoked the eighth item in the checklist is whether there is any reply on the claimant's identification of A. Any contract or other legal instrument out of or in relation to which the dispute arises, or B. In the absence of such contract or instrument, a brief description of the relevant relationship. If there is no underlying contract or the contract is legally invalid, these aspects could be brought out in the response to the notice. The ninth item in the checklist is the response to the claimant's description of the claim and an indication of the amount involved, if any. the 10th item is on the on the response to the claimant's relief or remedy sought the 11th item in the checklist is response to the claimant's proposal as to the number of arbitrators language and place of seat of arbitration the 13th item in the checklist is procedural history regarding the appointment or nomination of arbitrators the 14th item is the proposal for designation of an appointing authority or a response or counter proposal regarding appointing authority and unsettled arbitration is an ad hoc arbitration and therefore it is important to designate an appointing authority who is appointed based on consensus if not already provided in the arbitration agreement therefore the respondent is free to make a counter proposal on the appointing authority if it does not agree with the one proposed by the claimant the 15th item is regarding the proposal regarding the appointment of a sole arbitrator as opposed to a three member tribunal which is the default number of arbitrators in unsettled arbitration rules the 16th item in the checklist pertains to the challenge regarding arbitrator nominated by the claimant or reservation of right Usually the challenge is to be made within 15 days after having been notified of the appointment of the challenged arbitrator. The timelines of article 13.1 of the unsettled arbitration rules 2021 may be noted. Article 13.1 says a party that intends to challenge an arbitrator shall send notice of his challenge within 15 days after it has been notified of the appointment of the challenged arbitrator. or within 15 days after the circumstances mentioned in articles 11 and 12 became known to that party the 17th item in the checklist 
is a description of counter claims or claims for set off take care when you make jurisdictional objections because that might undercut the counter claims or claims for set off we have discussed this issue in the last lecture as well the 18th item in the checklist is regarding the amounts or reliefs or remedies as regards counter claims or claims for set off the 19th item in the checklist is that the notice of counter claim or claim for set off is to contain all particulars that are required for a notice of arbitration The twentieth item in the checklist is regarding the applicable version of the unsettled arbitration rules. There are two versions of the rules, 1976 and 2010. In the 2010 rules, several amendments have been made. So, which one would apply will depend on the wording of the arbitration agreement. Article one two of the unsettled arbitration rules, 2010, states in this regard: the parties to an arbitration agreement concluded after 15 August 2010. shall be presumed to have referred to the rules in effect on the date of commencement of the arbitration unless the parties have agreed to apply a particular version of the rules that presumption does not apply where the arbitration agreement has been concluded by accepting after 15 august 2010 an offer made before that date so for a proposal to arbitrate under unsettled arbitration rules Made after 15 August 2010 and accepted thereafter, the 2010 version of the rules is presumed to apply. Yes, of course, the words are very specific to the effect that unsettled arbitration rules 1976 will apply. The 21st item is recounting of the facts relevant to the dispute from the perspective of the respondent. The 22nd item is the denial of averments of the claimant regarding breach and losses. Denial is to be specific to each element regarding the breach and losses suffered. The twenty-third item relates to the application of the unsettled rules on transparency in fee-based investor-state arbitration to the conduct of the proceedings. The last item relates to submission relating to costs, including regarding the intent of the respondent to seek full costs of the proceedings. Note that in the next lecture we will add more items to the checklist for comprehensiveness. Once that's done, an editable copy of the checklist would also be provided. That's all in today's lecture. Bye bye. Take care and stay safe. See you in the next one.